1971, the decision was taken to rebuild the royal castle in Warsaw. The reconstruction of the historical interior was a great challenge to the team working on this incredible project. Restoration of the former decor was based on pre-war photographs, 18th century illustrations, including preserved designs, as well as later drawings. Descriptions of the interior, which had been drawn up at the end of the 18th century, were a significant source of knowledge about the rooms. Thanks to heroic work during the Second World War by a team led by the director of the National Museum in Warsaw, Stanisław Lorenz, it was possible to rescue hundreds of elements of the historic furnishings from the castle. Among others, this included sculptures, paintings, furniture, and even fragments of murals. Today, once more, they decorate the castle rooms and halls. Let's examine a few of them. Above the door in a decorative alcove in the Great Assembly Hall, we can see a medallion with an image of King Stanislaus Augustus. He is flanked by the personifications of peace and justice, virtues which were to guide the monarch during his reign. The sculptures were created by the king's court artists, Giacomo Monaldi and André Lebrun. The statues of Minerva and Apollo also returned to their rightful places. The ancient gods, symbolizing wisdom, valor, a love of science and art, and a talent for introducing order, fit perfectly with the ideological eloquence of the interior. They also signify the direction the king should take during his reign. Both sculptures are by André Lebrun, and each was created from a different kind of white marble. In this gala hall, five of the six door leaves are original. Removed and brought out in secret during the war by a team of Poles, they have now returned to their rightful places. They are decorated with motifs of Roman armor and were designed by the respected French architect Victor Louis, the designer of the Grand Theatre in Bordeaux, among others. One of the most precious 18th century bronzes in Poland is the set of six candelabras created by Philippe Caffieri. This French designer, sculptor and creator of castings, decorations for Notre Dame in Paris among others, produced candle holders for the Polish king in the shape of an antique tripod. The top of the construction is decorated by a sensor the arms have the form of cornucopia. Just like at the end of the 18th century, so today, the candelabras decorate the same hall. The marble room was recreated on the basis of surviving watercolors from the 18th century. The marble cladding from this interior had already been removed in the 19th century by order of the Tsar as part of repressions following the November uprising. This is why the interior had a totally different appearance during the 20 years between the two world wars. All the paintings returned to the reconstructed hall. Painted by Marcello Baccherelli, the artwork presents Polish kings. Stanislas Augustus looks down on the viewer from the largest painting. This piece became the official image of the ruler and so was copied numerous times. Currently, over a dozen copies of Bacciarelli's painting and his technique are known and were often given as a royal present. Next to the king, we can notice a sword with an eagle's head hilt, which had been made for his coronation. This precious item survived and is presented next to the scepter in another room. One of the decorative elements in the marble room is an original table with Greek ornamentation designed by the court architect Jakob Fontana. 
Beneath the furniture, one can notice a plaque with the names of the artist who decorated this particular interior. Six door leaves, covered in sophisticated inlays, come from the times of the king. In the Knights Hall too, all the paintings are originals by the aforementioned Bacciarelli. The largest one presents great events in the history of Poland. The smaller ones show distinguished poles. Images of eminent figures are also presented in the form of bronze castings. The busts, like other works of art, were removed from the room in September 1939 and transported to the National Museum in Warsaw, but are now back where they belong. The two sculptures made from white marble by Lebrun and Monaldi dominate the interior. They are Saturn Kronos and Eternal Glory. The mythological Saturn Kronos is a symbol of transience and rebirth. The king hoped that the virtues of the distinguished poles shown here would be reborn in future generations. As Stanisław Florence recalls, while saving the castle, they attempted to take fragments of decoration from each hall and room with historical decor, which would help recreate the whole interior. Hence, they managed to remove and hide decorations surrounding the oval portraits, among others. They returned to their places and today can be recognized by the darker color of their gilding. The throne room has its original window jams decorated with laurel branches. Just as in the times of the king, today we can also look at the same four figures of ancient Roman characters. On the walls we can see the darker parts of the paneling. Ordered by the king from the aforementioned Victor Louis, they decorated one of the most important rooms. After the war, the surviving fragments allowed for the recreation of all the decorative work. Next to the original throne stands two tables, two of the most wonderful pieces of furniture in the whole castle. They were a gift to the king from the papal nuncio. Their mosaic tops, inspired by ancient mosaics from Caesar Hadrian's villa, among others, present motifs of doves and ducks drinking. The legs are entwined in grapevines. In the conference room, several dozen fragments of the mural are original. They were hurriedly cut out in the winter of 1939 and 1940 in Arctic temperatures and later were mounted again on the walls of the reconstructed room. Thanks to these pieces, it was possible to accurately recreate all of the painted decoration by Jan Bogumil Plesch. Portraits of European monarchs of the time returned to their places, along with candlesticks, stools and consoles. An important feature of the room is also a table with a porcelain top. In the 18th century, it was described as follows. A very beautiful round table in the shape of a guéridon made from St. Lucy wood on wheels, covered in perfectly made bronze ornaments. The tabletop is made of Sevres porcelain and presents various adventures of Telemachus. The furniture is complemented by the decoration of the impressive parquet floor, recreated during the reconstruction, which accents the position of the table. In the king's bedchamber, apart from the original door leaves, most of the yew paneling, decorated in laurel and rose branches, has also returned to its place. The paintings were also part of the former fittings. Two of them present female characters from the Old Testament, Esther and Ruth. In the old audience chamber, apart from the many exhibits from the times of Stanislaus Augustus, like the aforementioned coronation sword or his scepter, the 18th century dark gold wall decorations stand out. 
the clock in the shape of a vase, whose mechanism was created by the court watchmaker Franciszek Guggenmus, also returned to the room. A set of ornaments by Pierre Gautier, one of the most famous 18th century creators of gilt bronze, which was bought by the king, returned to the original fireplace. Gautier worked for Louis XV and XVI, among others. One of the characteristic qualities of his work is his gilding method so perfected to give a matte finish. Today, this French expert in gilding and chasing is recognized as a virtuoso. The Canaletto room was recreated with original paintings by the painter. Their current arrangement reflects the way they were presented over 200 years ago. As he painted views of Warsaw, Canaletto knew exactly where the paintings would hang in the room. Therefore, we can notice that the paintings correspond to each other compositionally. In addition, the lower paintings, those we observe from above, are captured from a bird's eye view. In turn, hanging some of the paintings higher up, above the viewer's line of sight, allowed the painter to depict the figures less precisely. In the Senator's Chamber, where the Constitution of 3rd May was adopted, the oldest of Stanislaus Augustus' surviving thrones can be found. The piece was shown in a portrait of the king in the marble room. During the war, it was hidden in the cellars of the National Museum in Warsaw, covered by a tarpaulin and buried in rubble. Today, it is a reminder of the king's presence in the parliamentary chambers. Hundreds of original elements of the former fittings which returned to the castle chambers bear testimony to the incredible amount of work carried out, first to save and then to reconstruct the historical interior of the castle. They exemplify that the reconstruction of the royal castle in Warsaw is truly remarkable.